Hey guys, we'll be making an analog clock today in Pygame. Uh, why are we doing this? Well, programming is all about making easy stuff hard, so let's go ahead and do that. <laughs> we'll start with the layout that I've given you guys in the Pygame Basics setting up the display video. And if you don't really understand what's going on here, I recommend watching that video. But just to recap a little bit, we use this to set the display size, and we're going to use an 800 by 800 window today. We've set the caption. We've created the clock object, which helps us refresh the display at our desired frames per second. And here's our game function and our game loop, uh, along with our event loop. So let's go ahead and get started by drawing a circle on the screen. Remember, every time we draw something, we want to fill the display first with a blank sheet. So I'll say 255, 255, 255. So this will make a white background. Then we want to draw our circle. So pygame.draw.circle. And looking at the documentation, it wants our display first, it wants a color, so we'll just make it black, nothing fancy. Then it wants the center, which we'll do the center of the screen. And then it wants the radius, which I wanted to fill up the whole screen. So I think it would make sense to have a radius be 400. And let's run this and we have a circle. Now, of course, this isn't exactly what we want. We want uh, just the outline of the circle. We don't want to fill in the circle. So there's one more argument here called width, I think is what they call it in the documentation. But essentially that means what's the thickness of the boundary. And if you don't give it anything, or if you give it a zero, it'll just fill in the circle. So let's give it like a four. And we have the outline of our clock. Now from here on out, I think it would make sense to instead of use Pygame coordinates, which start at the top left, to use coordinates from the center point and then the radial system. So to see what that looks like, we can look at this demonstration here. So this is our display. And right now these are Pygame coordinates. But after we create our circle, it would make a lot of sense to use the radial coordinates from the center and have this be our basis, because this is where the clock starts, right, at 12 o'clock. And from then on, we can just define an angle, and the angle will refer to a certain time. So to do that, we'll have to remember a little bit of our high school trigonometry. What it is is the cosine of this radial length would allow us to get the y component, and then we'll just have to scale it back to pi game coordinates. And then the sine of this radial component will give us our x coordinate. And of course, we have to scale it back to Pygame coordinates. So let's go ahead and, and write this function. So I'll say define convert degrees to Pygame. And what are the arguments we want? We want the radius. So I'll do a capital R. And then we want a theta, which is going to be our angle. And anytime we're doing math, <laughs> let's start by importing math. Now that we've imported math, we can use things like sine, cosine. So like we said before, the y is going to be y equals math dot cosine of theta times r. And then the x is going to be math dot sine of theta times r. And we want to return a tuple of xy, but we want that tuple to be in pi game coordinates. So we're going to have to scale this back from the center of the screen to the top left. So I can say x minus 400 is what we want to return. Now you might be tempted to say y minus 400. However, going back to our demonstration, we realize that the y axis is going downward in pi game and upward in the way we've defined it. So we have to give it a negative sign as well. So it's actually going to be negative y minus 400 or 400 minus y. Now that we've written this, we can start by actually drawing the minute hand and the second hand and the hour hand. So let's go ahead and do that down here. And I'll say, so we'll start with the minute hand, and I think that's gonna be the longest one, right? We'll give it a radial distance of 400, and we'll give it a theta currently of 20. I'm just giving it a random number for now, just to draw it on the screen. So I can say pygame.draw.line, and we want a display, then we want a color, so let's use black. And then we want a start value, and the start value is going to be the center. So I'll say 400, 400. And for our end value, I think it'll be useful to use the convert degrees to pi game function we've written. So we can say convert degrees to pi game. And then we want to pass it the r and theta that we've defined up here. And that is definitely not what we want. And let's see what we did wrong. Uh, okay, so <laughs> when we have math, dot cosine of theta. This is actually going to be in radians. That's how the function is written, the math dot cosine, the math dot sine function. So to convert this 
to degrees. Again, we'll have to go back into our high school trigonometry here, and we can say 2 times pi, and we have to say math.pi, multiplied by theta divided by 360. And I'm going to cheat with copy and paste. Let's try writing it now. What the heck? Oh. Okay, so <laughs> should be x plus 400, right? So imagine we had the center point. The center point would be 0, 0, but the pi game unit would be 400 in x. So let's run that. And there we go. Now we have our minute hand. And we probably should rescale this a little bit to be a little bit less than all the way to the top of the circle. So that's great. And let's make this a little thicker as well. So remember to make the lines thicker, there's a pi game dot draw that line argument called width. So we can make this three, I guess. And honestly, I think it should be even thicker than that. Let's make it eight. There we go. Now let's do the same thing for two more lines, which will be our second and hour lines. So I'll say hour, second. Let's make this look at least reasonably good. And we need to make these a bit smaller. So I'll make the hour really small, so 250, and the second kind of small, 300. I also think it'd be useful to make the second red. So in our color argument, RGB, so I'll make the first one 255. That is not what we want. Oh, the problem here is they're all on top of each other. So let's move them around a little bit. 30, of course, we're gonna have to make this match the time that we have in real life. So we'll do that in a second. So this seems to have worked in regards to creating our lines. Now let's make the numbers. And this one's gonna be a little bit challenging because drawing numbers to the screen is more annoying than it needs to be in Pygame. So I've talked about this in one of the Pygame basics videos, but I'll go over it one more time. So I like to make a function at the beginning of my script to print text on the screen. So the three things we need, first of all, make the function. Print, text, the text that we want and the position we want to, oh, the position that we want to print it on. The first thing we need is we need to create a font. And we can do that with pygame.font.sysfont. This takes four arguments. The first is the font name that we want. I think Casteller is a good one for a clock. Casteller, if I can spell. <laughs> The second one is the font size, and I'll, we'll just try 40 for now. The third one is a Boolean to see if you want it to be bold or not, and I'll say true. And the last one is if you want italic, so I'll say false. Now let's create a surface. So that's the second step, the surface. Pygame, or sorry, we can do this from the font object. And again, I'm going through this fast because I have a video on this and Pygame Basics. Font.render, and we'll use three arguments here. First, we'll use what text we want to write, and that's text. Then there's a Boolean to see if you want rounded edges, and I'll say true. And then lastly, it's the color, and let's just do black for now. Lastly, the third step, where you have to blit it onto the screen. That has two arguments that we're gonna use. First is the surface, so that's surface. Then it is the position that we want to blit it to, so I'll just say position. Great, now we can use this function to start writing the um, numbers onto, this, onto the screen, onto the circle. So I'll just do that up here before making the hands. It really doesn't matter. So I'll say for a number in, well, range one through number 13, because Python does not use the last number here. So this will give us the numbers from one to 12. And I can say print text. What text do we want to print? The number itself. So a string of the number. And we want to print it at a pi game position that refers to where these numbers would be on the screen. So let's go ahead and look at the animation one more time for that. We want a one right here, which will be at 30 degrees, a two at 60, a three at 90, and so on and so forth. So what we want is convert degrees to pi game, radial distance of, let's try 350 for now. And then the angle would be number times 30. So let's go ahead and run this. Pi game font has no attributes sys font. Oh, that's going to be up here in the print text function it is sys font. So now we can go ahead and run this. We have what looks like a clock. Now, 
I don't really like how the left side seems to have more of a margin than the right. Now, how is this possible if we've just given a radial direction? Well, remember that when Pygame blitz objects onto the screen, it does so at the top left of the object. And the top left here is at the same distance as the top left uh, compared to the center, but that's not exactly what we want. And so let's just shift everything over to the left. And I'm sure there's a lot smarter ways of doing this, but I'm just gonna do guess and check. And if we go up to our convert degrees to Pygame, we can actually just do this by trying it. So let's give it maybe like a 30 pixel shift to the left and see how that looks. And I think I kind of overshifted it. <laughs> so let's cut it in half. Let's do 15. So yeah, there are smarter ways of determining how many pixels we should shift, but it's okay. <laughs> so that looks a lot cleaner. Now we just need to change the radial directions of these hands to match the current time in real life. So to get the current time in real life, there's a built-in Python module called datetime, import date time. And then within our game loop, we're gonna have to create a new datetime object every time to get the current time. So I'll call that current time equals datetime dot datetime dot now. I know it's a lot, but that's how you get the current time in an object called current time. And I can say seconds equals current time dot second, minute equals current time dot minute, and then of course hour equals current time dot hour. So let's give you an example. Let's say it is 8 a.m. or let's say it's 8.25 a.m. and 25 seconds. The hour will be 8, this will be 25, and this will be I already forgot. The hour will be eight. <laughs> this will be, I think I said 25, and the seconds will be 25. So let's use these within our theta variables for each of the lines. So I can say theta for the minute equals minute, for the second equals second, and for the hour equals hour. And let's see what this looks like. Name second is not defined. So I call it seconds. I'm just gonna change that to second. Well, no, it definitely did not work. <laughs> it's 315 where I'm at, and this is not showing 315. So let's try to understand why that's happening. Right now we're giving the angle theta literally either the minute or second that correlates with the, the hand. But that's not exactly what we want. With looking at the clock again, what we want is the distance that the hand needs to travel after every minute or second or hour. Anytime any of these hands goes around the circle, it will be 360 degrees. And for the minute hand, for instance, that needs to happen in 60 minutes. So we can say 360 divided by 60 is the distance that the minute hand has to go in the theta direction every minute. And we'll do the same for, this, for the uh, second hand and for the hour hand. So let's go ahead and do that. So I can say minute times 360 divided by 60. And I could do the same thing for seconds because there's 60 seconds in a, in a uh, circle around the clock and there's 12 hours so it'd be 360 divided by 12. Let's go ahead and run this and that looks a little better so right now where I'm at it's 316 and so our minute hand is pointed at 316. Our hour hand again is pointed to the top left of what we printed so it's three and our second hand is doing whatever our second hand is doing at the current amount of seconds. Now, as we see this second hand hit the top, you're gonna to see a jump change in the minute. And that's not exactly the behavior of an analog clock. I mean, it works, but that's not what we expect. It's a little too robotic. Why that's happening is because our minute does not include the relative contribution of how far through the minute we've gone, so how many seconds we've gone. I think it would make sense to add that in. So I can say minute plus 360, or sorry, minute plus seconds divided by 60. So this is how much of the minute that we've traveled through. So let's go ahead and run this. And if you had the time to sit there and watch the minute hand move, you can see that the minute hand is slowly moving every time these seconds goes around. And so we're going to do the same thing for the hour hand now. So the hour hand has a relative contribution from minute of 60, so minute divided by 60, because there's 60 minutes in an hour, and 3,600 seconds in an hour. 
So let's go ahead and run this. Great, so now our hour hand, if again, you had the time to sit there and stare at the clock, would be moving every second ever so slightly. And that's more of the behavior that we expect from a clock. Great, so we have our working analog clock.